Secretary, your education plan is estimated to cost $1.5 trillion. How do you expect to pay for it? And do you think voters can really rally behind more taxes? Well, I don't think that we're going to need um, more taxes on most voters. What we're going to do is repeal the Trump tax cuts. That's $2.3 trillion over 10 years mm -hmm. that we can get back and replace that uh, with a better approach in our tax code. Uh, secondly, we're going to expect more from people at the very top and from wealthy corporations. For instance, a few weeks ago, it was reported that Amazon had a profit of over $11 billion, but didn't pay any federal taxes. There are a lot of companies out there that are reaping a profit in our country, but not paying any federal taxes. We need to change that. We also need to close loopholes. Uh, and I believe that, uh, that we can make important investments like this if we have a tax code that expects more from the people at the very top and instead of uh, burdening the middle class. And too often times our schools are underfunded. Uh, the classroom sizes are too big. A lot of times uh, we have students that may want to go to college, but they have no idea how to get there. So this education plan is about making sure that we start early with universal pre-K for three and four year olds, that we improve K through 12 education, and that we make higher education available to everybody. It seems like you're proposing an overhaul of education. What do you say to those people who say, isn't it better to just fix what is already there? I'd say, we're competing against countries around the world that are educating their students better than ever before. So in order to compete with that, we actually need to reimagine our education system to not just go from K through 12, but really to go through from pre-K through 16. That today requires more education than ever before. And we need to rise and to meet that challenge in the United States. We don't have a single person to waste today. We need to make sure that we invest in every kid. Erika, you're a teacher. Why is your husband the man to fix the challenges in America's classrooms? Well, I think he understands, you know, coming from the background that he did, he understands the challenges that students are facing right now. Um, we both share similar experiences as students. And so from that personal experience, I think that helps drive his education plan. He can relate to wanting the best for not only his kids, but also for the kids of America. What improvements could be made? to the pre-K San Antonio plan when implemented nationally? I, I believe that uh, what we did here in San Antonio with pre-K for SA, which was to significantly expand high quality full day pre-K, was a great example of what communities can accomplish throughout the United States. So that basically you're taking kids at a, at a young age, at three or four years old, and putting them on a very strong start to get a great education. Because the problem for a lot of kids today is that by the time they get into kindergarten, they're already behind. You know, I don't want how much money a child's parents make or don't make to ever determine whether they're able to get a great education in this country. You know, I, my brother Joaquin and I and my wife Erica, I mean, we went to those schools that were underfunded, where uh, the books were not updated, where too many times the, the buildings themselves were underinvested in, they were falling apart. I don't want that for any student. A lot of times I feel like we were swimming upstream, but we made it. I don't want our kids to have to swim upstream. I want them to swim with the tide. I have the, the privilege of sitting down with the both of you. How are you sort of taking it all in? It's been going well. You know, we've been, the kids and I have settled into our own routine with, with him away um, a lot. You know, we miss him, of course, but, you know, we've, we've been able to settle into a routine. I'm still working full time and, and the, the kids obviously are still in school and so we're trying to maintain as much normalcy as, as possible. Anything you're fearful of heading into debate season and then just how long this race is going to be? Fearful? You know, obviously this is a new process for me myself and so I, I think I'm learning it as it goes. So in terms of what am I fearful for in the future, that I'm not sure. You know, I, 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 I think it would be there can be some really big critics out there. Mm -hmm. And so um, being strong enough, not only as him as a candidate, but us as a family and being able to withstand that. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.